Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to model uh, this bench. I'm going to show you uh, the way that uh, I would approach uh, when modeling these kind of shapes. It's not going to be exactly the same, but we're just going to model it approximately to get uh, the desired look. And I want to show you the technique basically. So we're going to use a T spline plugin for Rhino, and we're going to set uh, the geometry as uh, four X faces, four Y faces, and four Z faces. And now I'm just gonna approximately uh, put the dimensions here, like this. And now I'm going to uh, enter uh, the uh, the mode in uh, in T splines so that I can change the geometry. I'm going to go to uh, shaded view so that I can see what I'm doing. When I press Tab key. I'm switching between low poly and high poly mode. So for now, I'm just going to uh, look at this image and approximately see uh, how the shape should look like. So I'm going to go to this uh, side view for the, for the beginning. And let's just start uh, by moving this shape a little bit to get something similar uh, to the to the actual bench. So uh, this spline is is a quite um, flexible program, a plugin for Rhino that uh, all the geometry that I'm creating now it's it's not going to be permanent. So in any uh, situation I can actually change the typology and add more faces and subtract faces if I if I want to do so. So you don't need to be very precise when you model these kind of objects. You just need to approximately know uh, the effect that you want to get, and then um, you will you, you're good to go. So now I notice that I actually need one edge here to make this a little bit less less sharp. So I want to actually select this edge. Press K on the keyboard; it selects the whole. A circle around then I'm going to use this command to add to insert one edge like this and now uh, what I can do I can actually also manipulate a little bit on this part here and add it a little bit of thickness which is actually uh, the effect that I'm going for um, here on the bottom I can notice that it's actually uh, something like this So I can actually switch between these two modes and see which one are the best in my case. Uh, you want to to maintain the overall smoothness. You, this means that you want the lines to go smoothly from one side to the other. So this would mean that like you want to have smooth transition. You don't want to have very sharp corners. Uh, only uh, only you, you want sharp corners when it's like very 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 um, steep angle. Uh, in that case, you need this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, shapes uh, to follow each other. And now uh, let's let's see what we got. So, so I'm comparing this with my uh, with my uh, reference image. I can actually see that maybe I, I need another. Or no, let's see, let's see in the perspective. So yeah, so I need to move all this. A little bit inside to have nice, nice a seating place there. Okay, then I'm going to also add another edge here, like this, and here as well. Uh, all right, so now. I actually want to move this a little bit so that it creates nice nice corners. I don't want them to be very sharp. So if you move them the fillet is much better. Um, the same thing here. Just move them a little bit. As I said before this is not very important. It's just maintaining the overall shape of the form that uh, shape and form that you want. So. 
uh, when you're satisfied with, with how the shape looks from one side, then you move to the other side. And now I can see in my image, I see that it has like a, a little bit of a curve here and a bit of a curve there. So I want to, to try to imitate this. So I'm going to probably, yeah, pull this in, this part in, pull this in as well a little bit, and this one. So I want to create this smoothness effect like so. Maybe I even want to lift them up a little bit. Why not? Like this to have this the transition. And here I actually want to insert one more. Uh, th this side of the bench is a little bit too high for now, so I'm going to lower these parts down. Uh, and then let's see what we get. So we're getting closer. Now I just uh, it's just tweaking to see what would fit the best and what can I do to make the transition as as smooth as possible. I'm moving this in the middle so yeah so it has this nice transition effect uh, I'm maybe even going to move these two vertices inside a little bit like this and this one as well so the goal is to to have very smooth lines that's um, that's what we're going for like this uh, so I'm happy with this side. Now I'm going to see what I can do here. I see that this needs to be taller. And I actually see that I need one more edge here. Because I want to have a smoother transition here. I mean steeper, not smoother. Like this. Okay. So I have this nice angle there. And now let's finish up with these two. I'm I'm actually if you're wondering how I'm I'm selecting, I'm changing the uh the vertices and edges. Uh, I set up the hotkeys here uh in these planes. There's an option here that you can sell, set hotkeys like shortcuts for your uh, commands so I set here vertex selection object selection edge and face as one two three four so each time I click for example if I click number two it will give me the selection mode for the edges if I click number three it will give me the selection mode for the faces and uh, number one is for vertices and number four is for the whole object so that's uh, that's the way you can actually get very fast when modeling these kind of things because shortcuts are um, very useful when it comes to uh, speeding up the workflow and uh, uh, having the objects uh, prepared much much faster than you would usually do because each time you click each time you're searching for the command you're losing time so if you want to model efficiently you need to learn how to deal with shortcuts and how to um, implement them in your workflow because they're very beneficial at the end. Uh, not just I'm not just talking about these plans. I'm talking also about Rhino in general and uh, about any other program, CAD software, AutoCAD, 3ds Max, or Illustrator. So once I'm happy with with how this looks, uh, well, let's see. So. Yeah, I'm happy with the look. I just want to maybe move all of this a little bit further. I mean closer, sorry. Like so. I'm moving it, okay, like this. 
and I'm going to move these lines in the middle and maybe add a little bit of curvature there so that it seems like it's curving on the inside like this just just a slight touch so it has that smooth transition so um once i'm happy once i'm happy with with my uh model i uh, the next thing i want to i want to do is convert this geometry into rhino geometry rhino nerves geometry and uh the way to the way to convert uh the rhino geometry the t-spine geometry into rhino geometry is by uh using um, uh this option here it says when i click on the right click convert to rhino a nerves poly surface or mesh that's what we want so i'm quite happy with how this turns out turned out of course you you don't need to like you can modify it further if, if you want to make it perfect but just for the sake of the tutorial i i will leave it like this it's not uh, exactly the same as uh, the reference image but it's quite close uh, so you get the idea of how this can be created uh, so now let's convert the geometry uh, let's go right click and there you go now let's go to the top view and let's make some rectangles that we're gonna cut this surface with I'm just approximately creating this I'm going to copy it delete this one and copy this multiple times like this so that's my that's my cutting surfaces I'm just going to knock through them cap them delete the bottom curves and do the boolean difference and now we should be getting the result uh, once the calculations are done we will get here it is, I'll get a bench. And of course now it's not structurally safe yet because uh, we would just need to add some, some bolts and some uh, connections there on the bottom of the top, but this is the general idea. So now let's render it and see how it looks. Okay, so this is the final rendering of our uh, bench. Hope that you liked the video and if you have any ideas for any future tutorials you might like, please comment below and subscribe to my channel.